A very good evening to you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Youth Impact, where we are not just talking about growing up. We are growing up talking. This show has been brought to you by Success Africa in partnership with KUTV. I am your lovely host, Derek Wesley. Now, climate change has become a global issue affecting all people of all ages worldwide. Now, do the youths understand the impacts of climate change on their day-to-day -day lives? Well, Success Africa takes to the streets to find out more. Hi guys, this is Youth Impact and I'm Kenya Joy and we're here to hear the street views on climate change. Uh, for me, climate change is the, the adverse weather effect we are facing in the 21st century. Like for example, the numerous wildfires, uh, high concentration of carbon dioxide on air. And uh, we also have, uh, okay, this problem that is facing like huge water bodies in uh, around the world we have like the melting of the ice uh, i have seen a lot of increase not really seen but felt increase in severe high temperature currently globally so yeah. this is something that is affecting everyone um yeah i'd say i know i know climatic change um basically it's how is it something to do with the weather, how the weather changes or something like that? Yeah, so... I think it involves uh, people coming together to make the world a better place. That is by anything that affects climate. You know, they come together and uh, they talk about it. They do what they talk. So what I'm doing myself as a leader, by the way, I've been planting trees back at home. We have like a huge land. Uh, that we currently have uh, like a population of 2,500 trees planted recently in the last two months. And when you talk about something that I've done, do you mean also like telling others about climate yeah, change you, and, and doing campaigns? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I'm part of a climate organization that is just starting. It has not grown up, but uh, the main agenda is about climate change and youth involvement in climate change. Uh, at the moment, I'm only dealing with trash, I only take out trash. Mm -hmm. uh, long time ago I used to plant trees, but at the moment I'm not that much active into uh, environmental uh, conservation. But a while back I was an activist, mm -hmm. but uh, we got busy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I haven't done anything about it, but I wouldn't mind, you know, joining those platforms, those organizations that, you know, talk about climate change and then try to make the world a better place. I wouldn't mind joining those, participating. I think it could be good for me and for the world. Joining us on set today is one young man, an environmental champion, activist, and co-founder of Green Space Africa by the name Kelvin Jogu. Kelvin, Karibu on set. Thank you for joining us to have this conversation on climate change. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Uh, so I'd like us to start from um, the views that we've gotten. And we've said climate change actually affects people globally. But I understand that there are different regions. So how does climate change affect uh, different regions and uh, ecosystems around the world? It primarily depends on which part of the world you actually are. Mm -hmm. uh, you will see like uh, parts of the North Pole and the South Pole actually melting. Uh, this is due to increased global uh, climate. Mm -hmm. uh, the weather is becoming warmer, so uh, the glaciers are actually melting. Mm -hmm. When you look at uh, continents such as Africa, a majority of uh, the effects are mainly in terms of drought, famine, mm -hmm. and this is due uh, mainly focused due to a uh, lack of vegetation or uh, there of a lack of uh, Greenery. Mm -hmm. So well, basically, basically, climate change is a global issue, as we've stated, but every single region uh, uh, faces a different challenge depending on their uh, environment and uh, climate conditions. Yes. Well, that is good. So uh, back to Green Space, because uh, I understand that you are co-founder for Green Space Africa. So why the name Green Space Africa? Uh, the name Green Space Africa actually came as a... Uh, it's something that we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at the African region, uh, in the continent itself, mm -hmm. the vegetation when it comes to greenery is very is actually under 30%. Mm -hmm. So us increasing that from 30% to around 60%. That is, is a 30% increase. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, in the near future, 
we wanted to focus now on making Africa green, mm -hmm. not just in our country perspective in Kenya, but the entirety of the continent mm -hmm. by inspiring people to take action mm -hmm. uh, because this will have severe effects in the future. So that is a, a very big uh, initiative, especially for youth. And I believe uh, there are quite uh, a number of people who are getting into the initiative. So what does it mean for you? Because that is uh, quite a big uh, uh, challenge to yourself and, and green space at large. What is it? What does it mean for a young person to be in this in the space of uh, environmental activist? What it means is that we are protecting and safeguarding our own futures. Mm -hmm. If you are right now, if you're cutting down a tree, if you are are right now burning fossil fuels, you, if you are using plastics, mm -hmm. you are actually reducing our, son, our chances, and our children's chances of survival in the future. Mm -hmm. So what it should mean to us is that we are safeguarding our future, mm -hmm. our children's future, mm -hmm. uh, so that we can create a planet that is hospitable for us all. Mm -hmm. So other than what you've done uh, as an environmental champion, because I understand uh, you've had uh, different partnership levels, through which you've uh, planted quite a number of trees. So what are the current efforts and policies in place to address uh, climate change at the global level? At the global level, uh, it is, uh, when you look at uh, COP27, uh, the French agreement whereby all countries agreed to reduce the use of fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. In Kenya right now, we have a ban on plastics, uh, use of plastic bags. Uh, we also have the use of geothermal power. Kenya is 91% geothermal, and other countries are actually heading to that direction. Mm -hmm. uh, primarily uh, Western countries, because they are the ones which are largely affected by use of fossil fuels, mm -hmm. are the ones which are targeted for these uh, policies. Mm -hmm. Africa is mainly targeted because we are coming up and we do not want to make the same mistakes that Western countries have made. That is why you see countries such as Kenya, uh, South Africa, Egypt, actually making a change in terms of going more into green energy. Green energy. More and that is solar and, and, and all that. Solar, hydroelectric, mm -hmm. wind. Mm -hmm. So recently, uh, our president, actually, uh, His Excellency uh, Mr. Ruto, he approved uh, logging. So what does that mean to somebody who is actually fighting? to end logging and to plant more trees because when people uh, engage in logging activities, it means they are drastically reducing trees that have been in existence for close to 50 years. Yeah. That is probably older than the president. <laughs> uh, so when you look at uh, the, the policy, mm -hmm. uh, he wanted to do something, maybe create jobs, but I, did not, I do not think that he received adequate, uh, mm -hmm. adequate representation or actually advice because when you look at the uh, climate action mm -hmm. sector, there's a lot of um, jobs which can be gotten from uh, climate action. Mm -hmm. as, as compared to as the compared ones... As compared to logging. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now the courts have actually stopped the process mm -hmm. and we hope uh, the president will actually listen uh, from uh, to the young people because mm -hmm. this will set us back. And not just in terms of... Uh, years, it will set us back in terms of decades. Mm -hmm. So are there alternatives for people who entirely depend on logging? Because uh, in as much as logging is, is bad uh, uh, in regards to safeguarding a greener future tomorrow, there are people who entirely depend on, uh, on logging as a business opportunity. And this is how they get to feed their families, uh, which of course, some of, uh, of them consist of youths. So what uh, better alternatives do we have so that we don't just ban logging and see families going out there on the streets, trying to survive, struggling? Uh, I think we had really started as a country, since it was a six year ban mm -hmm. back in 2017, yeah. uh, whereby we had actually banned the use of logging. People had actually gotten now alternatives, whereby now people are seeing as trees more into economical purposes, mm -hmm. such as uh, fruit trees are very good when it comes to economic use, avocado trees, mangoes, and these are commodities and uh, products that the country can actually export to other nations, thus gaining income. Mm -hmm. It's not only from that perspective, it is also from the perspective of young people planting trees, whereby mm -hmm. young people are actually starting seed beds initiatives, whereby now they're taking the, seed, the seedlings and selling it to KFS. Mm -hmm. Uh, whereby now KFS is now planting. That is a Kenya Forest, forest Service. Service. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
uh, whereby they're planting it within forest reserves mm -hmm. and within the communities itself. Mm -hmm. Educational programs have also are also be a very huge initiative, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to schools. Mm -hmm. So when educating, uh, there are a lot of people who want to donate or actually finance education sector mm -hmm. in terms of uh, climate action. Mm -hmm. yeah. So basically what you're saying is that uh, there is a transition from just planting trees to planting trees of benefits. And that is what you mean by people yeah. engaging in planting trees uh, for fruits and all that. Yes, and uh, also the aspect of also carbon credits. Mm -hmm. People are actually getting paid just to plant trees. Mm -hmm. The more you plant, the more Which is a good uh, economic benefit to the yes. youth especially. Yes, although the companies it are uh, in the background are actually looking for tax incentives mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, if you are able to plant maybe 100 acres of trees mm -hmm. as a company, mm -hmm. uh, you are given a tax incentive of maybe a 10% cut, mm -hmm. uh, but it's still an initiative both from a policy level from the government, mm -hmm. from the company itself, and from the young people to gain and benefit. Mm -hmm. Now, you as an, an environmental activist, are there any projects you could say confidently that you're so proud of since you started this journey? Yes, actually. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, one of the projects that we're actually very proud of mm -hmm. is the partnership with our schools. Mm -hmm. Schools play a huge role in terms of education, but also in terms of mentoring young people when it comes to environmental space. Yeah. Remember we held uh, an event at Tuk University mm -hmm. uh, in partnership with Greener Cities, whereby we brought students in and these are students who have never planted trees before. Literally. Yes, literally. <laughs> mm -hmm. Even one tree. Mm -hmm. Never before. And when you see how they are happy just touching ground and dirt and the smiles on their faces. It gives them joy. Joy. That is a very yeah. beautiful initiative. So thank you for giving us insight. When uh, We are taking a short break. Uh, just hold that thought when you come back. We are going to talk on the tax uh, incentives and the misuse uh, around environmental activism. Thank you for not touching that dial and staying uh, tuned to Youth Impact. Now, Kelvin, back to our question before we took a break. Uh, you talked of uh, companies uh, taking advantage of uh, the climate change initiative to gain uh, tax incentives. And I'm also aware that we have quite a number of uh, environmental uh, groups or activists that are cropping up day in, day out. So how do you determine that this is actually a legitimate club, this is a legitimate group that is trying to fight for the better future? I really believe it's all about consistency. Mm -hmm. uh, the climate groups which will pop up one day and disappear the next after they've gotten their fill. Mm -hmm. uh, but the climate change are groups whereby they will actually work. Mm -hmm. Even with or without funding, they will lead the way. Mm -hmm in terms of tree planting, in terms of tree advocacy. And uh, these are the companies and uh, organizations that you are supposed to look at mostly. Mm -hmm. Because by the end of the day, we are all fighting to protect our planet. And taking it more seriously is should actually be a, a challenge to us all. Mm -hmm. The number one priority. Yes. So how do these youths uh, uh, communicate and uh, effectively engage with policymakers to ensure that they are driving a meaningful campaign? Uh, through advocacy mainly, mm -hmm. uh, by starting at the grassroots levels. Mm -hmm. We cannot start with uh, the presidential level, it's mm -hmm. too high. Mm -hmm. So we have to start with uh, the lowest uh, government official, mm -hmm. who is the chief. We have had uh, several collaborations with uh, uh, the administrator for uh, South B, whereby we've partnered with him in terms of uh, planting trees within the area. Mm -hmm. So that's where we start. 
So do you get access to these policy makers? Yes. To even have the conversations with them? Yes. Mm -hmm. So long as it's uh, something that is meaningful. Reasonable society, enough for, the, yeah, for their so time. So long as it's <laughs> something that would benefit our society uh -huh. and our country in large. Mm -hmm. They, will, they are very open. Ah, it's actually good to know that they, they do listen. Yeah. Because on the outside, people say they're too busy for these kind of conversations, but I'm super glad that you're <laughs> confirming that they actually listen. So, they are busy when it's something that is, looks fishy. Oh, but when, when it's something when that they is, sense danger, they... Yeah, <laughs> they <laughs> right, so you mentioned that you also partake uh, advocacy levels, uh, adv advocacy programs, let's say. So... Uh, is it that the schools uh, do not have a conclusive curriculum to factor in uh, climate change as a topic? Or what role does education play in ensuring that the youths or the people coming from uh, the lower levels are joining in the campaign? Uh, the schools, as of now, mm -hmm. do not have any curriculum on climate change, mm -hmm. which actually should change because it is something that is affecting us all. Mm -hmm. And it is an avenue that we can create a lot of uh, opportunities from. Mm -hmm. When we say advocacy within schools, we are, I've talked about partnership with certain uh, educational facilities and schools, mm -hmm. whereby we are actually partnering with the uh, environmental clubs. And even schools which did not have environmental clubs, we are creating environmental clubs mm -hmm. to teach uh, young children mm -hmm. and uh, the future about the importance of climate action and how doing a little bit mm -hmm. can impact our survival in the next years. And for the better of uh, everybody. Yeah, yeah. and I, this is a challenge also to the uh, Ministry of Education mm -hmm. because we need to set up a curriculum that surrounds our schools in terms of climate change and climate action. Mm -hmm. I am very proud of the initiative which they've taken whereby they've instructed all schools and our students should plant at least one tree. Mm -hmm. this wing, All through the academic year? Yes. At least a tree? Yes, at least a tree. Really that will help reduce the, the shock when uh, you had students who had never planted trees in yes. their life. <laughs> so uh, I'd like to speak on behalf of a thousand other youths out there. Because uh, I'd uh, hypothetically describe a youth as somebody who is probably out of school. They don't have much going on. They need uh, their life to make financial sense. So do we have any slight economic benefit to a youth who has just graduated maybe from campus, uh, who is planning to delve deeply into climate change action? What does he stand to gain other than, of course, protecting, uh, securing a better future for, for them tomorrow? As I said, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, opportunities within the climate sector, mm -hmm. uh, not just in terms of uh, both economically, socially as well. Uh, through climate change, you can actually get to find a number of people who are helping mm -hmm. in terms of donations and in terms of grants. Uh, there are companies mainly from uh, Germany or Europe, which mm -hmm. are actually very interested in uh, groups and young people who are planting trees. Mm -hmm. They will finance the, uh, the periods on which you're planting trees. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they'll actually give you support all through the period of you're yes. running the campaign. Yes, so long mm -hmm. as it's something that is legit mm -hmm. and it's something that you can actually uh, keep records of and show what benefit it's actually bringing. Mm -hmm. Other from that, food security is also a measure that is very well to look at. Mm -hmm. Young people right now, we are in the near future, food security is going to become a huge issue young people need also to look at it. So this is a benefit to us as well mm -hmm. in terms of food security. Mm -hmm. It is more of an insurance policy. Yeah, insurance you don't plant policy. a tree today, get a good life tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> nice. So what are some of the, because I believe this journey uh, doesn't really have to be smooth. So what are some of the challenges that you've gone through as an environmental activist? Some of the challenges mainly are in terms of funding. Mm -hmm. Uh, when it comes to funding, it's very difficult to actually access some of these grants because mainly you find that you are a lot of people or a lot of organizations fighting for a specific slot. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is also a challenge to the national government to create a type of system whereby, or a financial system whereby groups which are environmentally focused mm -hmm. can actually access funds to actually help in terms of combating climate change. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other challenge mainly is, as I've said, lack of knowledge. When you can't go to schools, there are no 
uh, mm-hmm. no one really knows nobody cares about trees climate change yeah <laughs> not just trees even climate change mm-hmm. people have had climate the word climate change but when you look when you delve deeper mm-hmm. it's not really something that people are focused on mm-hmm. it's something that actually needs to be looked at in a deeper level because we are in the blink of almost entire extinction mm-hmm. so this is a this is a huge challenge to us as the young people to our government and everyone who praise our role in terms of combating climate change. Mm-hmm. So uh, I wouldn't, uh, I like preferring to climate activists as uh, green commandos, but you see this is a, a term that is associated to war. <laughs> but I'd like to ask maybe, are there any, for people who wouldn't want to be referred to as just an activist, because that is uh, quite uh, unprofessional, some would argue, do we have career paths that would lead you to the environmental space yes mm-hmm. i in the, the better term is advocate mm-hmm. okay. oh, advocate. Advocate. advocate climate change advocate yes uh-huh. uh some of the careers mainly include uh when you look at in terms of uh, green energy mm-hmm. hydroelectric power actually in kenya has actually employed a lot of people within that sector uh there's also the manufacture of uh, solar energy or power mm-hmm. Uh, within our country and also installation. So these are key avenues when it comes to green energy. Mm-hmm. When you look at, they use other forms of uh, forms of uh, energy, mm-hmm. you will find that we, a lot of jobs are really not going to the mm-hmm. youth in terms of fossils. And this is actually an avenue whereby we are creating hundreds of jobs mm-hmm. and it's, it's actually cheaper to use uh, water and and wind to produce energy as compared to fossils yes because we have air in plenty of course <laughs> we're in plenty the uh-huh. sun is in plenty mm-hmm. so it becomes cheaper for us mm-hmm. and also as a country moving from the fossil fuel perspective towards a more greener and more sustainable country mm-hmm. yeah so another opportunity would be mainly in uh, fruits uh, because right now exportation of fruits is actually in high demand. Mm-hmm. You want an avocado, we have them. Kenya right now is the third leading producer in the world in terms of avocados. avocados yeah. And this is a tree which needs very little nurturing. Mm-hmm. And by end of day or end of year, mm-hmm. end of three years, let me just put it in terms of perspective, mm-hmm. three, years, three yeah. years, you will actually start reaping from this fruit. And it will run a course of maybe in the next 15 years, as compared to maybe I coming and cutting down a tree, mm-hmm. which will just benefit me economically for the next maybe month or two. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to now fruit farming and uh, planting trees that are fru- fruit trees in short, these are trees that will give us produce for the next for the years. Next. So that would be a long lasting investment. Yes. I personally love avocados. <laughs> so now before uh, we, cause we are winding up, uh, maybe you tell us a, a, a brief uh, v- overview of uh, what Green Space has in store for us and maybe an advice to the youths in very few words so that we could wind up. So Green Space is a environmental advocacy group mm-hmm. uh, which mainly focuses on uh, young people, refugees, uh, primary part of uh, how, mag- how refugees have mainly been chased out of their countries uh, due to drought famine, uh, which triggers a migration, mm-hmm. and also marginalized groups which, who are mainly affected by climate change. Uh, so we stand by these groups and uh, educational and advocacy mm-hmm. through educational programs, uh, which benefit our community. Uh, climate, uh, when it comes to green space, what we have in store for you in the next two years is uh, the span of uh, expansion in terms of uh, targeting more schools to grow, uh, to um, okay, put up or install mm-hmm. uh, seedlings or seedbeds in terms of the near future mm-hmm. that will benefit the schools in terms and also the government in terms of reaching their goal whereby every student should plant a should tree. Plant a tree. Yeah. 
So another, and what we as in green space like to say our motto is preserve, sustain and restore. Preserve, sustain and restore. restore yeah. That is actually a very good initiative. At least we are hoping that in the next uh, by Vision 2030 we'll have every single person with a tree tag, with a name tag on, on every tree. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for this lovely conversation. I hope to have you when you've achieved your goal for a greener Africa yeah. and you'll sit on this chair and explain to us how easy or hard it was. Well, that was it from Kelvin. On to the Youth of the Week segment, we are taking a look at an outstanding innovation by Munira Twahir, who is an innovator of Ari Social, an initiative by Inteco Kenya, distributing pads through ATM machines. Munira Twahir is making a difference through innovation. She is the founder of Interco Limited, which created the Ari Pad ATM dispenser. Since its inception in 2013, this dispenser has provided more than just sanitary parts. It's offering dignity and empowerment to young girls. Education is at the core of this initiative. Interco Limited conducts workshops educating girls about menstrual hygiene and demonstrating the proper use of the Aripad ATM. In addition, Interco Limited brings together teachers, parents, and community leaders ensuring a united front against period poverty. Through dedication and hard work, Interco Limited aims to create lasting change. Their campaign focuses on sustainable solutions that make a difference beyond short-term donations. The Aripad ATM dispensers have been installed across Kenyan schools. The process is seamless. Girls simply swipe their unique ID cards and the Aripad ATM dispenses a pad. One ID card, one swipe, a powerful step towards eradicating period poverty. Munira Twahir and Interco Limited are beacons of progress. Their Aripad ATM dispenser is more than a machine. It is a beacon of hope for a brighter future for the girls of Kenya. After that lovely conversation, there is no better way to end the show than remind you the three words from our lovely guest. Preserve, restore, and sustain for a better tomorrow. As always, we say, stay curious and keep making a difference. Until next time, adios.